You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. Inconceivable Monday. Today we talk about one of my favorite words. Well, not one of them. I'd say it's probably not my favorite word, but it's definitely in the top 10. It's like LeBron James. He's in the top 10. Is he the best? No, but he, he's, he's up there. Concupiscence. What, what does this word mean? I mean, I, I hear it sometimes. I know it's in the confessions. I've heard my pastor say this word. What does it mean to be concupiscent? Well, this is a lovely thing. In Article 2 of the Augsburg Confession, on original sin, or Luther like calling it inherited sin. It says that because of this inherited sin, you know, the fall of Adam and Eve, it's brought up in Psalm 51 verse 5, in Romans 5, you have this sin that's now passed down to all of us. None of us are conceived righteous, we are sinful. And what does this mean then? What does this look like? Does it just mean we die? Well, that's one of the things, right? The wages of sin is death, so we all die. But what else don't we have? What else is no longer natural to us, but has to be given to us? Well, one is a, a righteous fear of God, love for God, faith in God, right? That's why we deny like decisions, theology. Uh, that's why we don't say people naturally fear God. They don't love him. You know, we actually hate his guts, right? We're natural enemies of God. But then there's this other thing that comes along with all this, and it's concupiscence. It's an evil or wicked inclination. That's what it means. An evil or wicked inclination. What does that look like? Well, you don't have to teach a child to say no or to throw a fit, but you do have to teach them how to say yes and thank you and please. It's easy to have road rage, right? I mean, we all get road rage, or maybe you don't get road rage, but like road upset or road bothered or something like that. Uh, you know, it's, it's, we, when we're buying something like a car or a house or even buying like a, a shirt off somebody, you know, we, we don't offer them $25 over the asking price, but we offer them something lower. We, we lie, we steal, we get angry, we have lost. This is concupiscence. Because of our fallen nature, we're inclined toward evil things. And in the scriptures, there's a verse for this. Right before the flood and right after the flood. God looks at man and says, all of the intentions of his heart are evil from his youth. He says this before the flood, and then he still says it even after the flood. This is our condition. We are concupiscent, wickedly inclined. Christ then has to do something about it. He comes and takes that heart from us, this concupiscent nature, and he pays for it on the cross. Because we still have it, but now in Christ, it's forgiven. We're brought by faith to repent of our inclinations. And Christ, who is not inclined toward evil, but inclined toward mercy and love and forgiveness, does it for us. So God bless y'all. And I pray that you've learned about this concupiscent thing so you can recognize it and know the goodness of your Lord in forgiving and saving you. God bless. We'll see you next time.